page 316, number 13, sketch the graph of the function y equals 3 times the cosecant of x over 2. Now, before I start this, the graph cosecant, we know cosecant is 1 over sine. So I'm going to try to graph this function here, y equals 3 times the sine of x over 2. Now, let's think about what this 3 does to our function. The 3 will make this sine curve 3 times as tall and also 3 times as low. So I know a sine curve will follow this up and down wave pattern. But instead of going up to 1, down to negative 1, we're going to go up to a value of 3, down to a value of negative 3. So let's start by taking care of that. Second of all, what does this x over 2 do to our graph? Well, I know it's going to stretch or shrink it horizontally, so my graph's either going to be three times as wide or three times as narrow. Well, I know that for a normal sine curve, normally we start at zero, go up and down here, end at two pi, and then that continues over and over again. So what I want to do here, I'm going to set x over two equal to zero, and x over two equal to two pi. Those are my usual starting and stopping points of every period. If I multiply both sides here by 2 to solve for x, I get x equals 0. If I multiply both sides here to solve for x, I get x equals 4 pi. That tells me that my new starting point now is going to be at 0. My period is going to end after 4 pi units. So I can put 2 pi here. We now have pi and 3 pi. So my sine curve, we normally will start that at the origin. It's going to reach a maximum value after pi units. At 2 pi, it's going to go through this axis again. At 3 pi, it'll reach a minimum value. And at 4 pi, it will end its period and start a new one. So I've got my curve. It's going to look something like this. And continue on forever. OK, so that is the graph of y equals 3 times the sine of x over 2. Now I want to graph y equals 3 times the cosecant of x over 2. First of all, let's talk about these zero values. Cosecant is 1 over sine. So if I have a value of 0 for sine, 1 over 0 doesn't exist. So at all these zero values, cosecant does not exist. I can show that by drawing some asymptotes. OK. So now, my cosecant graph. Secant and cosecant, the graphs look the same. It's these U shapes that approach these asymptotes but never touch them, and also touch our sine curve right at these maximum and minimum values. So I've got U shapes that look something like this. And these U shapes will continue on forever. They'll always approach the asymptotes, never touch them. I could keep drawing. Now let's just verify this graph using our calculator. I'll press the y equals key, and we want to graph y equals 3 times the cosecant. Now, I can't graph cosecant because I don't have a, a button for cosecant, so I'll just type it in as 1 over sine. So 1 over the sine of x over 2. And we'll close all of our parentheses. I think that'll do it. And let's take a look at this graph. So here's those U shapes. We can imagine here's our asymptotes at 0 and at 2 pi. There's one of my U shapes up there. The second one doesn't even show because my, my, my scale on my calculator is not quite the same as this, but I can see those U shapes similar to what I have on my graph that we did by hand.